Hi there, I'm Laura from Principal. Wherever you're joining me from, I'm glad you're here. September is the month of National 401k Day. We're celebrating by sharing some tips on how to make the most of your retirement savings. You want to feel knowledgeable and confident about your savings, especially for retirement. So today we're going to review how to maximize your employer-sponsored retirement plan, as well as other financial vehicles to save for your future. If you're wondering when you should start saving, how much, and how to know if you're on track to meet your goals, you're in the right place. Whether you're 25 or 55, saving now can make a big impact on your financial future. There's no time like today to take charge of your goals. First, we'll watch a short video. Then we'll get back together to answer some top questions we receive about retirement planning. Like, should you be invested in a certain way in your retirement accounts? How to know whether you'll have enough saved for retirement? And steps to take if you're behind on your savings. If you have questions of your own, you can submit them anytime using the Q&A feature. We'll answer your questions as they come in. After today's event concludes, we'll send an email with a link to watch a webinar replays in case you missed any information. So enjoy the video and let's get started. There are many ways to save for long-term goals like retirement, but can you guess one of the most common ways? Here are a few hints. This was developed in the 1980s. It's one of the most common benefits available through most employers. 600,000 businesses use it. About 60 million active employees use it. If you guessed 401k plans, you're correct. Now is the perfect time to talk about ways to save since 401k day occurs in September. Since their inception, 401ks have given individuals the ability to save for the future. At the same time, they provide tax advantages. While 401ks are the most common way to save for retirement, there are additional ways to help provide financial security for the future. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how to maximize your 401k or 403b benefit and discover additional ways to save, like through IRAs, health savings accounts, and more. The most important thing to remember is that no matter what your age or stage of life, it's not too late to start saving. Since many employers offer a 401k plan, let's talk about ways you can maximize your benefit to help reach your goals. The first is to start saving as soon as you're able. Whether you're 25 or 55, saving now can make a big difference in your future. Of course, it's a good idea to start saving as early as possible in your career so your money has more time to grow. But life can be unpredictable, so whenever you're able to start is the right time for you. Now that you're sure about wanting to save, you may still be unsure about how much to save. You're not alone. Based on a recent principal study, 50% of workers aren't sure how much they should be saving for retirement or know they're saving less than they should be to reach their retirement goals. We can help. A good rule of thumb is you may need to save at least 10% of your pay plus employer contributions throughout your career. That's estimated to leave you with enough to replace about 80% of your pre-retirement income. If 10% seems like a lot right now, that's okay. Getting started is the most important part. You can choose to contribute a smaller percentage and then increase your contribution amount annually until you get to 10%. Wondering if your current savings are on track to meet your goals? Check your retirement wellness score at principal.com slash my score. Your score will be green if you're on track to replace about 70% or more of your pre-retirement income, yellow if you should consider making changes, or red if there's a gap between your savings and your goals. Then you can adjust your contribution amount to help increase your score and savings. If you're ready to start saving in your company's 401k, visit principal.com slash welcome and you can be up and running in just a few minutes. The second way to maximize your savings in your 401k is to max out the match. Some employers may offer a match on employees' 401k contributions. For example, an employer may offer to match 50% of the first 6% of their employees' contributions. So, if you maximize the match, there's essentially free money going into your account from your employer. Another way to ensure your 401k is aligned with your goals is to choose investments that fit your risk tolerance. Your 401k offers a list of investment options chosen by your employer. 
For example, while all employer-sponsored retirement plans allow you to create your own mix of investment options, some plans also offer pre-built investment options. These are a mix of investments chosen by a professional based on factors like how many years until you plan to retire, or specific risk tolerances. There are also services called managed accounts. Managed accounts provide investment advice throughout your career based on your financial situation and your goals, sometimes for an additional fee, so you can choose which options may work best for you and your long-term goals. No matter which investment option you choose, pre-built, managed accounts, or build it yourself, you'll want to understand your comfort level with risk. Keep in mind it can change over time. What was once an acceptable level of risk for you in your 20s may not be your comfort level now if you have a partner, children, or are close to retirement. We can help you get a quick snapshot of your risk tolerance. Visit Principal.com slash Investor Profile Quiz to get started. And if you need help at any point along your investing journey, don't worry. A financial professional can answer your questions and help you make a plan. To find a financial professional, visit Principal.com. Before we talk about other methods of saving for retirement, remember one final tip for getting the most from your 401k. That is, don't be afraid to check in. We're not saying you need to check your account balance daily, but it may be a good idea to check in quarterly to see if you're on track. Life can change quickly, and your financial responsibilities can too. For example, marriage, divorce, a new child, a new home, and more. Reviewing your retirement account quarterly gives you the chance to adjust your contributions, reassess your risk tolerance, and more, all of which will help you stay on track to meet your goals. Now that you've learned ways to maximize your savings in your 401k or 403b, it's time to talk about additional ways to save for retirement, whether it's a few years away or a few decades away. For many, a 401k may be their main savings vehicle, and that's perfectly okay. But depending on your goals, it may be a good idea to have multiple savings methods. That way, you lower your risk of outliving your savings, and you can capitalize on potential tax advantages from different accounts. It can be helpful to think about saving for retirement as a three-legged stool. One leg of the stool may be income from Social Security. Another leg may be the savings in your 401k or 403b. And the third leg is supplemental savings. Using this approach, each of the three legs serves as a separate income stream, giving you more financial security than relying on a single source of income in retirement, or more security than a single-legged stool. So what exactly is supplemental savings? Good question. A common type of supplemental savings is an individual retirement account, also known as an IRA. An IRA is a type of investment account that's owned by you, not your employer. There are two types of IRAs, traditional and Roth. A traditional IRA is like a 401k, which means you can deduct contributions from your current taxable income. On the other hand, if you choose a Roth IRA, the money you contribute has already been taxed, so your qualified withdrawals after age 59 and a half are tax-free. Keep in mind, though, that your Roth account must be open for five years and you must be over age 59 and a half to be eligible for qualified tax-free withdrawals. Depending on the IRA you choose and the provider you work with, you'll have a variety of investment options to select from. Just don't forget to select a mix of investments that's right for you. Want to learn more about IRAs? Visit Principal.com slash IRA Basics. Annuities are another way to add to the supplemental savings leg of your stool. Certain annuities provide you with a source of guaranteed income during retirement, which is similar to Social Security or a pension. There are several different types of annuities, including tax-deferred investment accounts called deferred annuities. Let's take a closer look at how deferred annuities work. A deferred annuity has two phases, the savings phase and the income phase. The savings phase is when you pay premiums, either a lump sum or installments, into the annuity. The income phase is when you're ready to retire and the annuity converts into guaranteed income payments. Keep in mind that you pay taxes in the payout phase when you begin receiving your annuity payments. However, if withdrawals are made before age 59 and a half, you may be subject to a 10% IRS penalty. There are two types of deferred annuities, variable and fixed. Variable annuities have many advantages, including high growth potential. That's because variable annuities are tied to the rise and fall of the market, 
which means your balance will vary day to day. At the same time, variable annuities offer options to help protect against market declines for those who are more risk averse or closer to retirement. Another benefit to a variable annuity is that earnings grow tax deferred and they come with insurance death benefits that don't require underwriting, so they can be a good way to create financial legacy for loved ones. Fixed annuities, like their variable counterpart, offer tax-deferred earnings, but are a more conservative option because they provide a guaranteed interest rate for a specific time period. When the term is up, the annuity renews at the market's current interest rate. That means you'll get an interest rate you can count on, but you won't have the opportunity to benefit from potential market upswings. The bottom line, once you retire and need income, both variable and fixed annuities can provide a regular income payment for a certain number of years or for the rest of your life. If you're wondering which type of deferred annuity may be best for you, talk with a financial professional about your options. In addition to IRAs and annuities, health savings accounts or HSAs can be another good way to save for expenses in retirement, whether you're just starting out in your career or getting close to retirement. Here's how it works. You contribute pre-tax money into your HSA and earnings grow tax-free. Then you can withdraw funds tax-free as long as they're used to pay for qualified, health-related expenses prior to and in retirement. HSA funds can be used to pay premiums for medical insurance, Medicare premiums, long-term care insurance, doctor's office visits and procedures, eyeglasses and contact lenses, nursing home services, dental treatments, and more. However, if the funds are not used for health-related purchases and you're not yet 65, there will be a penalty. You can contribute to an HSA until you turn 65, but once you enroll in Medicare at age 65, you'll lose HSA eligibility. The upside is that at age 65, there's no longer a penalty for withdrawing HSA funds to use for non-medical expenses. After age 65, you can use the funds in your HSA for any expenses, but remember you'll still owe income tax on non-medical expense withdrawals. If you choose to use the funds in your HSA for medical purposes after age 65, those withdrawals will be tax-free. Since healthcare is one of the largest expenses retirees face, a health savings account may be a good option to look into. For more details about how HSAs work, visit Principal.com slash milestones or talk with your HR provider to see if you have a high deductible plan that offers an HSA. Another way to add to the supplemental savings leg of your retirement stool is by using brokerage accounts. While there are no tax advantages to investing in them, brokerage accounts offer you another way to invest while saving and they can be helpful at any stage in life. Brokerage accounts allow you to invest in stocks and mutual funds outside of your employer-sponsored retirement plan, and you can invest as much as you'd like. Instead of putting money away in a savings account, a brokerage account gives you the opportunity for higher growth, but also the potential to lose money you're trying to save. Keep in mind that while the invested assets belong to you, a broker or firm will still be required to execute buy and sell orders on your behalf, and there may be additional fees involved. If a brokerage account is something you'd like to learn more about, reach out to a financial professional. You can find one at Principal.com. Don't forget about another way to increase your retirement savings, an employee stock purchase plan, also called an ESPP. If the company you work for has its own stock, some employers offer an ESPP as an added benefit. ESPPs allow employees to purchase stock on a payroll deductible basis, often at a discount and you may be able to get capital gains treatment on stock appreciation. If your company offers an ESPP, it can be another way to help boost your savings no matter where you're at on your savings journey. Talk with your HR department to find out if this is a benefit available at your company. It's never too late to save for retirement, whether it's two years away or 20. Now you've got the knowledge to help you maximize your 401k savings and the resources to learn more about IRAs, annuities, health savings accounts, and more. Keep up the good work and continue to take steps toward a more financially secure future. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now let's take a look at what we have for questions. 
Our first question today is, how do I know if I have enough money to retire? Great question. It's important to mention first that this will look different for everyone. Since everyone has different goals for retirement, you may need to save differently to reach those goals. Your retirement wellness score is the first step to see if you have enough saved or if there are gaps you may need to address. Your score shows what percentage of your income will be replaced in retirement. Your goal is to aim for a green score. Yellow is a sign that some adjustments may need to be made to help you reach your goals. And red means you'll want to review your plan. If it's not quite where you want it to be, one of the most impactful ways to move your score is to increase how much you're contributing each paycheck. Plus adding information related to outside accounts like IRAs or HSAs can help you get more of a complete picture of your total savings. You can view your score at principal.com score. Our next question is, I'm behind on saving for retirement, but with the proposed student loan forgiveness, I'm gonna be able to save more. Where should I start? That's great to hear. With the announcement that up to $20,000 of student loan debt could be forgiven, this may help free up some discretionary funds for you to put toward your goals, like saving for retirement. If you haven't already started saving, the best place to begin is principal.com slash welcome. You can get enrolled and started on your savings journey in just a few minutes. If you're already enrolled and wanting to save more, log into your account at principal.com and see what bumping up your contribution amount by a percent or two will do for your retirement wellness score. And regarding questions to your personal student loan situation, there's not much information available yet. So consult with a financial professional for specific questions. Next up we have, how can I protect my savings against market volatility? Diversification in your retirement accounts can be a good way to help hedge against market volatility. By choosing not to put all your eggs in one basket or asset class, you may be able to smooth out some of the swings in the stock market. Spreading out your money across a range of asset classes may help reduce risk while also matching to your risk tolerance. You can check to see if your investments are diversified and balanced to your risk tolerance by logging into your account at principal.com. Let's see what question we have next. In retirement, how much should I be withdrawing for my retirement plans each month? This is going to depend on how much you have saved for retirement and how much you plan to spend in retirement. A good place to start is by looking at your spending history, then think what may differ in retirement. This would be your rough annual income need, and you can break that down into what you may need every month. For example, if you need $3,000 every month, that's $36,000 a year that you'll need to withdraw from your retirement accounts. A good rule of thumb is to have a retirement withdrawal rate of three to 4% a year of your total retirement savings to reduce the risk of outliving your savings. Up next we have, should I be invested a certain way in my retirement account? Knowing how comfortable you are with risk and the number of years to retirement can help determine this. Take the investor profile quiz at principal.com slash investor profile quiz to get started. You'll answer eight simple questions to help you determine your investor profile, which suggests what mix of asset classes may be right for you. Your results could range from conservative to aggressive. Generally, if you have a while until you're planning on retiring, say 30 to 40 years, it may be beneficial for you to invest more aggressively. An aggressive investment mix may offer higher returns on your investments, but it could also mean more loss. But you have time on your side. If you're nearing retirement, conservative options may be better, so you're less likely to be affected by market volatility. We'll take one final question today. I want to maintain my wealth into retirement, but I'm nervous about how long it may have to last. What are some options for me? That's great. Like we mentioned before, sticking to the three to 4% annual withdrawal rate will help you avoid outliving your savings. We also recommend sticking to a budget in retirement. Following the 50, 20, 30 rule, 
No matter if your income is fixed or irregular, your essential living expense, like housing and minimum debt payments, should account for 50% of your budget. And savings, it should stay at around 20% of your budget. That leaves the remaining 30% for personal wants and things to enjoy. Just be mindful that that fun 30% amount may have to be less than 30% depending on your income to make sure your essential costs are covered. That concludes the Q&A portion of today's events. We'll continue answering questions in the queue. Hang tight if you haven't received a response yet. We're working hard to try to answer each question. What can you do next? Visit principal.com score to see your overall retirement wellness score. Like we mentioned earlier, it can help you easily see if you're on track to save enough to meet your goals or if there are gaps you may need to address. Aim for a green score. You can explore options such as your monthly contribution to help improve your score if needed. Make sure your information is up to date to help you get a more complete picture of your total savings and financial health so that your score is a true representation of you. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll send an email with the link to watch a replay if you missed any information. To replay or share this webinar and see a list of upcoming webinars, visit principal.com slash learn now. You always have 24 seven access to replays. Take care and we hope you'll join us again soon.